Today's daf is daf Ayin Ches, and we're going to begin on the top of the Omud, and we're in the middle of Rabbi Pinchas. Rabbi Pinchas, in the name of Rav Huna, said the following, Mikan v'elech, when the magical river flowed from the Kodesh Kedoshim, and it reached all the way out far into Yushalayim, is then and it would continue flowing, and now it's really flowing full force until it reached Sion, which is outside of Yushalayim, and that's known as base David. Now, with regard to Ir Sion and Ir David, there's a pasuk in Shmuel Beis that has to be studied, and immediately after. The Meshich of David, David was anointed as Melech. He went out to battle against the Yavutzim who were occupying Yerushalayim. And he saw that it was impossible to fight against the Yoshve Hayavusi. Therefore, he went first to conquer an area, a, a location called Mitsudas Sion. At this point already, it's torrents, it's flowing with a great deal of strength. And Bo Rochatzim Zovim Vizovos Nidos Violodos, Violdos. And this is an area where theoretically, and I'll explain what I mean by theoretically, you could use that area for Tvila to be retired from Tumas Ziva or Leda, or Nida, the only problem is that it's a Sakana. And that's why I say theoretically. In other words, it has all the qualifications of a mikvah, except for the fact that it's dangerous to go in there. They won't allow you to go in there for security reasons. Shenemar, it says in the, this is in the third, 13th chapter of Zechariah with regard to this river that came out of the Kodesh Kodashim, that will come out of the Kodesh Kodesh. Vayomahu yeh makar niftach lebeis David uliyotshvei Yerushalayim lechatos ulenido. That in the future, this nachal will come out of the base of Migdash. They'll take mayim from this river and this flowing water, and they'll use it for the mayim of Efer Paraduma. As you know, the Paraduma which was necessary to create mechatos after the ashes of the paraduma would be mixed with mayim, the Torah requires that it be mayim chayim el keli, a live source of water, spring of water. And the afer of paraduma could be added to the water that was taken from this magical, supernatural mach, uh, nachal that came out of the Beis Hamikdash. And again, this water could be used for Tvilas Nida as well, if not for the problem of Sakona of danger. Omar Rav Yosef Mikan, from this Pasuk, with regard to this river that is royal Tvila for a Nida to be Tovel in, after it reaches the Pesach based David. And Remez Lenida Shetricha Lechev Ad Savora Bamayim, that the waters of a mikvah for Tfilas Nida should be as least as deep as waters that would reach until her Savar, until her neck. And the Gemara concludes, we don't pass in like Rav Yosef, but if the mikvah has the volume of 40 saw, then it qualifies for Tfilas Nida even if it doesn't have that depth, that the water would reach up to our neck. Now we go back to our discussion on Daf Ayin Zion about allowing in certain circumstances people to go through the water on Yom Kippur for the sake of a mitzvah or to avoid a loss of money, and they could go up to their neck if it's, again, still water, not rapids. So the Gemara wants to know the following. Tenach Yom HaKippurim Deleka Minol, Shabbos Dika Minol Mai. On Yom HaKippurim, 
since there's an Iser of Ne'ilas HaSandal, so that's okay to go through the water and he's not wearing or she's not wearing shoes, that's fine. But on Shabbos, to go through water, when you're wearing your shoes, my, what's the din? Will we allow you to go through the water? Or shall we be afraid that perhaps as you're going through the water, the shoes might fall off your feet and you might come to carry it for Amos in Rosh Hashanah. So perhaps we cannot allow this because of the problem of Chayshina Letiltul Rosh Hashanah. Again, that doesn't apply on Yom Kippur because he's not wearing shoes on Yom Kippur. Omar Nechemia Chasne de Benesia. Nechemia was the son in law of the Nasi. Anoch Azise, I can testify that I saw the Rabbi Ami for of Asi de Motu le Urkuma de Maya. That when it came on Shabbos, they went through a little pond of water, the Avru Derech Malbush, and they kept their shoes on their feet. And that's considered derech malbuch, and therefore it's not considered like you're carrying it. And they weren't worried and concerned that maybe their shoes would fall off in the water and then they would carry it for Sarab. The Gemara says, wait a minute, Tainach, that makes sense, Minol. Minol is a full-fed shoe that has straps, and the straps you can tie tightly around your feet in such a way that we don't have to worry about the fact that it might fall. But sandal, sandal, is something that just covers the bottom of your foot, and it's almost impossible to tie it down tightly to your foot. Michael and Meymar, what would be the din in that case? Omar of Richume, Anoch Hazise Ravina, I can testify about Ravina, the Ovar Derech Malbush, that he would wear even sandalim and go through water on Chavez while he wore his sandals, and you see that he's not afraid that maybe he might lose his sandals and start carrying them when they fall off. Later on, we'll see that Ravina might have changed his mind and rescinded and he went l'chumra later on. Because Rav Ashi Omar, sandal l'chatchila lo. Since a sandal is not tied tightly down to the foot, we have to worry about the fact that it might fall and he'll carry it for Shusarabim and we will not encourage him to wear this, to wear sandal in. However, the Gemara goes on and tells us the following story. Reish Galusa, the Rosh Hagola, Ikla le Chagronia. He came to a place called Chagronia. Le Bey Rabbi Nosan, and he was staying in the house of Rabbi Nosan. Raphram, the Kul Rabbonon, Raphram and all the rabbis, except for one, Asu le Pirke, they came to hear the Drasha of the Reish Galusa. On Shabbos. Ravina lo also. Ravina did not show up. Lemachar, the next day after Shabbos, boy Raphram, Raphram wanted to investigate Ravina to find out why he wouldn't show up. He didn't show up. And he did this investigation, this inquiry, and he investigated and interrogated Ravina in the presence of the Reish Galusa, hoping that Ravina had a good excuse as to why he didn't show up for the drush, because otherwise the Rosh Galusa would be very angry and hold a grudge against Ravina. So the purpose was La Fuke Ravina Midaite Deresh Galusa, so that the Reish Galusa would hold no grudge against Ravina. So Omar Lay, Rafram turns to Ravina in the presence of Reish Galusa, my time will also mile Pirke. Why didn't you show up yesterday to hear the drush? of the Reish Galutza, I had pains in my legs and I couldn't walk. So Raphim says, Why didn't you wear shoes? And that would protect your feet. So Ravina responds, The injury that I suffered from was on the top of the Kafa Regel. And I couldn't wear shoes because that would irritate the wound. So Raphim turns to says, Iboilach, the Mirma Sandala. Okay, the top of the shoe would rub against the top of your leg where you had injuries. But what about the bottom of your feet? You could wear sandalim and tie them down to the bottom of your feet. And 
that's very wide. It's not going to cause any pain. You could have come in Sandalim. Amalais Ravina says, There was water, a pond of water that separated me from the synagogue in which the Reish Kalusa was delivering his lecture. So again, Raphim interrogates him. Why couldn't you wear your sandalim instead of taking them off and holding them when you go into the water? You wear them on your feet. That's called derech malbush. And in such a case, it's mutter. And you yourself, Ravina, were the one who said that you could pass through the water wearing sandalim on Shabbos. So Ravina responded, in a rhetorical question, do you not Agree, lahod yomar of Ashi, sandal lechatchila lo. That lechatchila, you should not wear a sandal going through water on Shabbos. You might uh, have an occasion where it falls off your feet. It's not tied down properly, and therefore you might come to carry it for Amos rishus or Rabin. So Tosi Shonim asked the obvious question: Ravina himself was matir to go through water. How could he now quote uh, Rav Ashi when he disagreed with Rashi? And I'm going to suggest here, just combining different commentaries, three answers. Number one, it could be that this is a different Ravina. There were two people with the same name, Ravina. Number two, it could be that Ravina was only saying this in order to push him off. And really, he held it would be Mutter. And a third answer would be that Ravina actually changed his mind. And he rescinded his original Kula. And instead of Paschal immediately, he was concerned with Rav Ashi's psak, and therefore he was mach. Tony, we have a brysa that was taught us by Yehuda Bar Grogros. Osur leishev al-gabitina biyom One is not permitted to sit on moist clay or concrete on Yom HaKippur because he gets physical pleasure from the moisture of the tit. And therefore it's like a an oneg of rechita, which is also in Yom Kippur. Omer of Yeshua ben Levi, betino mitapachas. Only if the tit is very moist. How moist is it? Omer abay betofech amenas latpia. The only isa that would apply here is if the moisture in the clay or in the uh, concrete, fresh concrete, is such that if you would touch it, you can now transmit that wetness to another object. Now, the following sugya addresses the question of how you can cool off on Yom HaKippur, if it's a very hot day, what can you use to cool off? And obviously, you're not allowed to use rechitz, you can't wash your body, but you're allowed, says Rabbi Yehuda, to take peros, fruits that are cold, and to br- brush them over your face, and that'll cool you off. And this is not called rechitza, and therefore it's mutter. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda used to take a gourd, in Hebrew it's called a delas, and he used to use that to cool off his face. Rabba, mitztani b'yinuka. Rabba would rub his body against the body of a child, a young infant, who has a colder body. And Rava would take a silver goblet, and silver is cold, and he used to use that to cool off. Omar of Papa, but Papa says, you cannot accept Rava's leniency in an absolute way. You've got to qualify it restricted. Casa de Casa de Caspa, if you have a goblet that is made of metal of silver. Male also, if it's full of water, then you're not allowed to use it to cool off because we're afraid that maybe some of the water will spill if it's not, you know, if it's filled to the top, and then he violates these rechitza b'mayim on Yom Kippur. Chaser, if on the other hand, it wasn't completely full, shari, then you're allowed to use this almost full cup that's made of silver to cool off your body because we're not afraid that it would spill. And that's when Rava would allow it. Now, the parcha is a pottery vessel, an earthenware vessel. Now, Chazal always assume about earthenware that the liquids are absorbed 
because earthenware is very porous and they constantly will be pollate, they'll come out. So therefore, even if you're talking about pottery that's not full to the top, you're not allowed to use pottery to cool off yourself, because there'll be a plate of the liquids that were absorbed inside the earthenware vessel. Ravashi Omar, Kosa de Kaspa, Choser Nami Oser, Mishum Dimiz Dores. According to Rav Ashi, depending on the Girsa here, if you have a goblet that's made of silver, even if it's not filled to the top with water, nevertheless, you're not allowed to use it to cool off because it's very slippery. And as a result of the condensation that makes it slippery on the outside, it could fall. And we're afraid that maybe the water will fall over his body and he'll be in violation of the Yisra Chitza on Yom HaKippur. The Eero Bar Chama Ushpezichnin the Rav Ami, Rav Asi, Rav Yishim, and Levi, the Kula Rav Honit Kisri. The Eri, Zeira had an inn, he was the innkeeper, and all the great rabbis who came to the city of Caesarea, Caesarea was then a center of both the Roman leadership and the Jewish scholars, and they all used to come and stay at his inn. So he learned a lot by watching the different rabbis and how they were knowing. And in this case, Havi Oma Leila, Rav Yosef, Braid, Rav Yeshub, and Levi, Zeira tells Rav Yosef, the son of Rav Yeshub and Levi, I want to tell you something about your father, his customs. And he addresses him as Bar Arye, the son of a Talmud Chacham. Ta Emil Chacham, and listen, I want to tell you, Milsa Ma'al Yisa Davi Ovid Avu. A good thing about your father, Rabbi Shum and Levi, that he was knowing to do. What did he do on Erev Yom Kippur? On Yom Kippur, it's very hot, especially in Caesarea. And how do you cool off on Yom Kippur? You're not allowed to wash your body. So what he did was, mit pachas, he took a kerchief. He would take this cloth and soak it in water. The also soak him in kalim neguvim. And before Yom Kippur began, he would squeeze out the water from this wet kerchief. It still maintained and retained some of its moisture. And on Yom Kippur, with the minimum amount of moisture that was left absorbed in this kerchief, he was able to wash his face and his hands and his feet. And he wasn't worried about the violation of Rechita because this is not called washing yourself. Erev Tishabov, Shoro Sambamayim, he did the same thing on Erev Tishabov, but he did not bother squeezing out the water on Erev Tishabov from this sopping kerchief, Ula Macham Avira Al Gabi Enov. And he would cool off his eyes by touching his eyes with this kerchief. And what he did was that at night, during Tisha B'av, he would leave this kerchief to dry out, but it wasn't totally dry. He didn't do schita as he did on Erev Yom Kippur, because on Tisha B'av, in the worst case scenario, he could do schita on Tisha B'av itself. There's no isa schita to squeeze the liquid out of a rag on Tisha B'av. There's only such an Isra on Yom Kippur, therefore he had to make sure that he did the schit on Erev Yom Kippur because otherwise we're afraid that he might inadvertently squeeze out the water on Yom Kippur and violate a Moloch on Yom Kippur. V'chein, and so too ki osa Rabba Bar Mori, when Rabba Bar Mori came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, Omar, he recorded, that the Erev Tisha B'av, Mevim Lo, they used to bring Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi on Erev Tishba mit kachas, the shoro som b'mayim, umei nicha tachas rashosav, he would hide it under his, his pillow, under his head, so it wouldn't completely dry, it would still retain some of its moisture, lemachar, and on Tishba itself, mekaneach, panav yodav araglav, he would use his kerchief to cool off. The air of Yom HaKippurim, however, mevim lo mit pachas rashosav, also come in kalim neguvim, which means 
Kalim Neguvim means that are they, these are utensils that are somewhat wet. They have a certain limited amount of moisture to them. And that's the result of the fact that he squeezed out the water on Erev Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur al Gabi Enov. He would cool off by using this somewhat moist rag and applying it to his eyes. You should know that we had the exact opposite tradition as to what went on over here. On Tishabov, Dafka, he would squeeze out the water and make the kerchief into kalim neguvim, like dry vessels. On Yom Kippur, he didn't mention a word about schita. And the Gemara rejects this second uh, transmission because Osivnach, Osivnach, I'll ask you a question, schita. How can you tell me that on Erev Yom Kippur, he did not squeeze out the water from this kerchief that's sopping wet on Yom Kippur, he might come to a mechshel and inadvertently violate the Yisra Shkita. Now the Gemara is going to bring a series of questions that were raised and addressed to Rebbe Lazar. One of them has to do with Yom Kippur and Inu on Yom Kippur. Now, by way of introduction, to understand the first question, we have to know a little bit about the parsha in Bamidah Yilches called Bechar Be'ema Tahora. If I own an animal and the animal gives birth to its firstborn and it's a kosher species of an animal, I have to give it to the Kohen. And the Kohen, if the animal is a Tam, in other words, there's no blemish, he will go through the entire process of Hakrava on the Mizbeach, and then the coin is allowed to eat the basar because it has the status of Kachim Kalan. However, if the animal, this Pachar, has a mum kavua, that's a permanent blemish, you have to be an expert to recognize that this is a blemish, a mum, and therefore cannot be brought on the Mizbeach, and it's a mum kavua, it's not a mum over that will pass. Now, in event, that the animal is has a certified, we'll see how to certified, a certified mum kavua, then it's chulin. And it's given to the coin as a gift, and the coin doesn't have to be makravid, he can't be makravid, it's a balmum, and he eats the boss. We'll soon see that the coin really has vested interest here, that there should be a mum kavua, because that's going to save him the whole hassle of having to go through that krava he could just shech the animal as a gift to the coin, and uh, he'll eat the bosom. They asked the following question, Rabbi Loza, Zokin, a scholar, the Yoshev B'yeshiva, and he sits with the Sanhedrin. The halacha is, as formulated by the Sugi in Sanhedrin Dafhe, that we won't shecht a bachar as if it were chulin until a mumcha, an expert who's ordained to identify and declare that this is a mum kavua. And in order to get his certification, his ordination, he's got to get the approval of the Nasi in Eretz Yisrael. But what about a zaken? The Yoshev be a Shiva, he's a member of Sanhedrin. He's in the high court of Israel. You're going to tell me he needs certification to identify a Bukhar? Ain't no tzarek. Do we need that he get permission licensed by the Nasi? Or no. In this case, he's a clear cut, well recognized. Uh, ordained member of Sanhedrin. He's a Zaki Yosh Shiva. He doesn't need to get permission from the Nasi. So the Gemara says, My Komi I don't understand your question. Why do you vacillate at this point? It's clear. It's so crystal clear that we have a Machlokis now in the Rishonim as to what the Gemara means by it's so clear in which direction was the Gemara going. Is it absolutely clear that since he's a member of the Sanhedrin, he doesn't need permission from the Nasi? Or on the contrary, what the Gemara meant to say was that for sure he needs to get permission. Excuse me, he needs to be licensed 
by the by the um, Nasi. Why? Because his smicha is for dinim. Dinim means when you have halachic issues, court cases, and controversies, he sits on the high court, he will decide them. But here, we're not talking about dinim. This has nothing to do with classic smicha to sit on a bezdin on Sanhedrin. This is a different halacha. This halacha that we have to get the permission of the Nasi. And that's because that's the way you get recognized as the expert who is authorized to determine and declare that this Bechar is a Baal Mum Kavua. So the Gemara now explains the suffix that was raised in front of Rabbi Lozor. He had the Omar Rav Idi Bar Ovin, Dover Zed, this requirement of getting licensed by the Nasi in order to be Matir Bukhar and call it a Balmun. Hanichu Lahem Lebe Nasiya Kedelis Gaderbo. This rule that you need license from the Nasi was instituted as a fulfillment of the mitzvah of kavod for the Nasi. We have to find different methods and, and ways to personify, to manifest the greatness and the authority of the Nasi. And this was one of the vehicles that was instituted that you cannot go ahead and be matir b'char and call it a Balmum without getting license from the Nasi. And therefore, now we have a suffix, Sarach Lito Rishus. If this Allah and Kvod Nasi, then every Zakin, even if he sits on the Sanhedrin, he has to defer and give this due respect to the Nasi. Or Dilma, even the Zakin, we also be Shiva in Sarach. Or maybe shall we say that once he was appointed the Sanhedrin, that gives him carte blanche and ordination authority in every single area of halach, not just dinim, but even as far as being makir b'char as a balmu. And the Gemara tells the story in order to come to an answer to this question. Omar Rabbi Tzadok Bar Chaluka Al Ragla V'Yomar Anira Isis Rabbi Yosi Ben Zimra Shezaken V'Yoshev B'Yeshiva Hoya V'Omad B'Maila Mizikno Shalzeh I want to tell you about Rabbi Yossi, how great he was. Not only did he join the Sanhedrin, but more than that, he was more important, they gave him a high seat, than the grandfather of this present contemporary Nasi. Imagine, Rabbi Yossi dates back to a period of time, he was an old Jew, a great scholar, and he was considered even greater than the Nasi in his time, in his youth, who was the grandfather of the contemporary, the present Nasi. And yet, nevertheless, not al Rishus Lahatib He gave respect to the present Nasi. He was certainly much greater in scholarship, and he applied for ordination to get licensed to declare a Bukhar as a Balmu. And now Rabbi Abba has an entirely different version of the story. Amalei Rabbi Abba to Rabbi Sadiq, lo That's not what happened. The story is just the opposite of what you're telling me. Elokachoyah maisa, Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra Kohen Oya, he was a Kohen, and only because he was a Kohen and they brought him a Bukhar, which was given to another Kohen, that's why there was a suffix and Rabbi Yossi vacillated as to whether or not he needs a license from the Nasi. Now let's understand why it was not clear to Rabbi Yossi whether or not he needed license or not. Halacha, Kirabi Meir, O Dilma Halacha, Kirabi Shimon Gamliel. 
We have here Machlokis. Rabbi Meir Diomar, he holds him a set to Bechorus on Daf Lamed Hey. Choshed Bidavar, Lo Dono, Velo Meido. If a person might have vested interests, he's called Choshed. And a Kohen doesn't want to do the Avoda, it's a big hassle. If he can get away with it and declare that this Bechor has a mum, it's not a Tam, and therefore cannot be brought on the Mizbeach, he saves himself the entire work and tirch of going through the entire avoda. Instead, he just takes the animal. It has a moon. It's a bachar. He gets it as a gift, and now he shechts it and eats it as chulin. And in all cases where a person has vested interest, Rabbi Meir says, he cannot judge and issue a verdict. He cannot testify. And therefore, this coin since he does have vested interests, because if he can be matted this bechar by declaring that it's a mum, he doesn't have to be metapel, he doesn't have to go through the entire rigmarole of checking it, etc., etc., in order to eat it. And therefore he's chashed. One of the Mepharshimia goes ahead and says he's chashed not only to claim that this is a mum, but even to make a little incision. That's how chashed he might be. O Dilma, should we say, Allah, he rejects Rabbi Meir, the Omar, Neman who al shel kaver ven eno neman al atzma. Rabbi Shimon turns to Rabbi Meir and he says he went too far. If he's testifying on his own bechar, then he has vested interest. This is his. He's going to now declare that it's chulin because it's not a tam; it's a balmum, and now he shechts and it eats it. But Rabbi Shimon Gabriel says, "Don't go one step further." Let's say they bring a Bukhar to Kohen X, and now when they want to determine the status of this Bukhar, whether it's about Mum or Tam, they bring it to Kohen Y. And Kohen Y has no vested interests. He's not eating the Bosa. Uposhatle and Rabbi Yossi Ben Zimra came to the final conclusion and a Kohen could be Matir a Bukhar even without permission from the Nasi, if he's qualified because he has the status of a Zaken Yoshe Yeshiva, which certainly Rabbi Yossi Ben Zimra had that status. That was the first question that was raised to Rabbi Lozal. Furthermore, they asked Rabbi Lozal the following question, Mao Lotzeis Besandol Shel Sha'am Biyom HaKipurim. 